Thanks for checking out today's video. We are diving in talking about this Indian Scout Rogue. And if you're looking for a, a smaller cruiser style motorcycle, I think this bike is for you. I did a lot of shopping around before I bought this thing. And I'm gonna tell you today why this bike could be the bike you're looking for versus some of the other ones like the Yamaha Bolt. Uh, maybe you're looking at the Scout 60. Maybe you're looking at the Scout Bobber versus the Rogue, or maybe you're looking at Harley Sportster S or something like that, or maybe a Harley uh, Street Bob. But let's dive into this, talking about the specs of this bike. All right, overall, look at the styling of this bike. That's kind of what sold me on this bike versus the Bobber. I really like the club style quarter fairing that it has, the 19 inch front wheel, the aggressive stance, and overall, I think this is a better bike personally than the bobber of the Scout. I just, the Rogue just stands out a little bit more to me, uh, but that's personal preference. But uh, let's start at the engine, because a lot of people are wondering about the engine and stuff. Beautiful looking engine. It has this flat black matte type paint that I really like. Overall, the engine just looks cool. It's a 69 cubic inch motor that equals out to 1133 cc's. So not quite a 1200 cc, but very close. Uh, puts out 100 horsepower if you get the full size version like this one. But they also make a 60 that has a little bit less horsepower. I think it's around like 78 or something like that. But this 100 horsepower model does put out 72 foot pounds of torque. It's a fuel injected bike. And uh, yeah, it puts the power down. Look at the other side here. I mean, really good looking engine. Uh, on some of the bobber models, they have some that have like chrome plating and things like that on it. I really like the blacked out look that it has on the Rogue. It matches those black exhaust. The exhaust system on this thing looks pretty good. At first, I didn't really like how bulky these huge exhausts are on the side here. I mean, these are coming off I'm gonna be putting some of the GP shorty exhaust on it, but uh, they don't look bad. Honestly, this grew on me. I was not a fan of these huge exhaust tips, and I think they weigh like 20 pounds a piece. So we're gonna be taking those off and putting something a little bit smaller on there, a little bit louder. But overall, this thing has a pretty good exhaust note to it just from the factory. I mean, it's a really nice sounding bike anyway. It's a 60 degree V-twin. You can tell this is a, a little more in line with kind of like how Star Motorcycles does it versus how Harley does it. Uh, but very good looking engine there, 60 degree V twin. Like I said, fuel injected, has a really good throttle response to it. And you can see the airbox would typically be right here. Uh, not the case with this bike. The, the airbox is actually up under the gas tank there. So that's kind of like one of those Polaris type air box systems they threw on the Scout. And you can upgrade that. They make a bunch of different air box options for this Scout. So uh, we talked about the engine a little bit and some of the specs on that, uh, but it does have six gears in the drivetrain, which is a really good option if you get this full size. Uh, when we do the road testing and stuff, you'll kind of see, you, you don't feel like you're gonna run out of gears with this bike. I would say if you get the Scout 60, which only has five gears, I think you're gonna be a little bit disappointed because that fifth gear, even though they uh, stagger out the gears just a little bit to kind of even out the gearing a little bit, it's not gonna get you the full gearing effect that if you were to have six gears. One reason I went with this full size Scout and also the power output because 100 horsepower on this bike, as light as it is, coming in at 500 and I think 45 pounds with a full gas tank and everything, that's pretty good. So really, really nice with the gearing on this one. Has this belt drive. You can see the belt there. Yeah, really like the belt drive. And all the components around the belt or metal. Everything's metal. So no plasticky parts. I really like that. Everything on this bike is just super high quality. And I'll show you even the frame. I really like how the frame is 
on this thing. Everything is just cast aluminum. And it's just really high quality. I mean, even the swing arm, you can see it's just cast aluminum versus like a tubular type swing arm, which, you know, it's just kind of outdated. Honestly, Indian really stepped up the game making this frame. This whole thing is just aluminum. You can see all that. It's just really nice frame. Love how that is. And then you got your radiator kind of tucked in between there. And then you got this radiator shroud on the front, which is plastic. Which, uh, I don't know if I like the look of that. But, hey, it's, it's not a bad look. And the frame is kind of what sold me on this. If you look at the Harley Sportster, you look at uh, the bolt. The frame is just tubular. It doesn't look the greatest. It's just... It's very outdated looking. This has that modern look to it with uh, some retro styling, very aggressive styling, which makes this bike look really, really good. Let's talk about the wheels and tires a little bit. So this does have a 19 inch front wheel, which adds to the handling and the nimbleness of this bike. And the wheel is a little bit thinner than what you get with the bobber. The bobber has a different tire as well. This one actually has the, the Metzler Cruise Tech tires, which have a really good pattern to them. The one that comes on the bobber, I'm not sure what brand they are, but has a little bit aggressive pattern to it. And uh, I don't like them near as good as these. So cast front wheel and rear wheel. Now the rear wheel is a 16 inch rear wheel. Uh, the front we said was a 19 see there has a little bit thicker tire and everything on the back as well to kind of be paired up with that smaller wheel now up front you have a two piston caliper 198 millimeter rotor and I will say the brakes on this thing works amazing I have no complaints about the brakes this one does have the ABS set up as you can see right here it has the ABS and most dealers only purchase the ABS model because uh, you know I think they they believe it's a little bit safer uh, to give the customer that so they're not ordering a lot of the standard models that doesn't come with ABS so I've been noticing that uh, the rear brakes flip around here uh, the rear brakes same size rotor same ABS system except for back here you only have a one piston caliper uh, and it's down at the bottom there you can see it up under here can't see it too well but it is a one piston caliper but rear wheel back here same pattern everything matches really nice all right let's talk about the suspension suspension looks really good on this bike you know on a lot of uh like the bolts and stuff like that a lot of people will black this out of course there has to be a helicopter going over uh, they'll black this out i think this just matches really good i don't think you're gonna have to do that uh, the fork tubes here look nice no complaints there but it only has 4.7 inches of travel in the suspension this is just a telescoping type suspension it's not a inverted tube or anything like that but not bad there they are 41 millimeter fork tubes and I've already done some modifications to this I've already took some of the reflectors off of here so it does come with reflectors there it comes with reflectors on the sides and the rear. So we've already taken those off just to make it look a little bit better. And I don't do a lot of night riding, so I don't think I really need them. Uh, so talk about the fork tubes. So there you go. Pretty nice looking forks, blacked out, nice looking metallic fender, brake lines and uh, ABS line. All routed nice and neat up through here let's look at the shocks on the back here so a lot of people criticize as this being one of the weakest points of the scalp and uh, I kind of agree you can see right there they say it has two inches of travel uh, that might look about like an inch of travel honestly so and I've even cranked this down a little bit to accommodate for the passenger seat 
We'll talk about the seat here in a minute. That is not the stock seat that comes with this. But uh, yeah, that's even adjusted. As you can tell right there, I've adjusted it down quite a bit on that tube to account for the passenger. But still, it's really only an inch of travel. So Indian does make a piggyback style shock. And I think they also make a Fox racing shock for these that has a little bit more travel, maybe up to maybe two to three inches of travel versus this right here. It says it has two inches of travel. I don't think it does. Uh, we can talk about the overall height of the bike. Overall height of the bike is 46.5 inches, the overall length 87.5 width 39.2, and the seat height, which is one of the most important parts here, because a lot of people look at this bike, if they're shorter, is 25.6, very short seat height. I'm 5'9", with an, a very short inseam, probably around 32 inches, and uh, I can flat foot this thing very easily. I would say you could flat foot this thing, even if you were 5'6", with like an average inseam. Uh, it's a very low seat height. Uh, which brings me to the next uh, thing there. Uh, wheelbase, 62 inches. Ground clearance, 5.1. Very low. Super low to the ground. And then the lean angle, which is also very important, 29. So I rode it out this morning. Didn't really have any issues. Haven't even rubbed the, the pegs or anything yet. And we were doing some pretty sharp cornering and uh, no issues there, but a lot of people say this does rub fairly easy. So let's talk about the seat. So uh, I'll show some clips of the original solo seat that this thing comes with, and it's literally the same looking seat, except it doesn't have this rear passenger piece. Same material, same everything. I think it feels the same. Um, this one just has a little bit more of an aggressive slope right here. The solo seat is just a little bit more rounded off at the top. But both of them, when you crank down on the throttle and stuff, it they both keep you in place really, really nicely. I haven't had any issues with that. So yeah, I'm gonna do a future video on how to install this Indian Syndicate seat and also install these passenger foot pegs, which you do not get standard on this bike. Costs around 650 bucks to install all of that right there. Uh, and that's if you do it yourself. So uh, fuel capacity on this. So you can tell it has a pretty long gas tank, which makes it look good. Uh, it's kind of stretched out looking. 3.3 uh, gallons, which isn't that much. Uh, and then the running weight of this bike with a full tank of fuel is 545 pounds with a gross vehicle weight rating of 988. So that's with you, your passenger, and everything should not be more than that weight right there. Uh, and that's to run safe with your suspension and all of that. That's why that weight rating is there. Um, overall, the electronics on this bike are very simple. Very, very simple. We'll take a look at that here in a second. But before we do that, let's look at some of the other stuff you get with this bike. So the headlight. You'd think they'd have an LED headlight, but it's still just the old halogen headlights. Turn signals, bullet style turn signals, which look really nice. You know, before I bought this bike, I was thinking about purchasing some smaller turn signals and stuff to go on it, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to leave it just like this. It does come with the quarter fairing, which does absolutely nothing when you're on the highway. It doesn't really block much wind, maybe just a little bit in front of you has this smoked out tinted uh, plexiglass type material up here. But that looks pretty good too. Of course, there's another plane going over. Uh, as far as the handlebars and the controls, this is one of the reasons I bought this bike. It comes with these mini apes. I would say about eight to 10 inch mini apes, which puts you in a really good seated position. Comes with forward controls and these are perfect for me. Like I said, 5'9", these are perfect. I love these forward controls. And that's just another modification you're not gonna have to do when you purchase this bike. Really like the forward controls. I mean, the whole seating position that it puts you in is just perfect. I rode the bobber version of this and it did not feel 
even half as good as this. You're kind of lean forward and it really puts a lot of strain on your back and stuff. I know in the test drive, I was kind of strained over a little bit. And uh, yeah, I guess if you're into that kind of look, then go for it. But I think this Rogue just has a more uh, laid back type feel to it. And it's a lot more comfortable for longer rides. I went for an hour and a half ride this morning and no issues, no lower back pain, no nothing. And I normally have lower back pain anyway. <laughs> But with this bike, it really puts you in that nice seated position. Uh, I like these mirrors. These bobber style mirrors tilted down. Uh, when I first got this bike, they were they installed them pointed up, which uh, I thought was funny. But uh, as soon as I got it home, I flipped these around the way they're supposed to be. And they work good. Uh, sometimes you'll have to lean a little bit to see in the mirrors from uh, where your arms are. But, you know... That's no big deal, at least for me. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, talking about the paint colors. This is the metallic black. You can see that sparkle. It, it doesn't have a very pronounced sparkle. It's not like it's glittery. It has a really good looking paint job to it. Uh, they do have a flat black version. They got a bunch of different colors. I think they got purple. They got the military green. They got two-tone gray and black. They got a bunch of different colors. Uh, so you can check out Indian's website. They, they have a ton of colors. Uh, I honestly went with this gloss paint just because I can keep it clean a lot easier than I can flat paint. And uh, you can polish it. You know, you can't really polish flat matte paint. So I really went with this just because of that. Uh, and the flat, color, the flat colors actually cost a little bit more which wasn't a problem, but um, this one, you know, I really like the the durability of the gloss paint where you can polish it up and stuff like that. So longevity, that's kind of why I went with that color. I told you I removed the reflectors off the forks up front. There also were reflectors right here. I took those off, made a, the bike look a little bit sharper, and I took the warning sticker off the tank right here and uh, I should have made a video of me doing that. It came off really easy. Just uh, a little bit of heat from a heat gun. And then that thing just peeled right off. And then uh, just wiped it down with uh, a cloth. And it was easy like that. Um, but man, this bike looks good. I mean, if you're thinking about going with the Yamaha Bolt or a Harley Davidson Sportster, I would strongly suggest getting this right here. And that's not just because I bought one. I test drove all of them. And just in my opinion, this bike right here is just way better. It's it's more refined. It's it's not as clunky and vib it doesn't have the vibrations. It still has the same sound pretty much as you get from a Harley. And uh, yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with this bike. Um, has that reflector back there. I'm probably gonna take that reflector off just because I think it looks a little goofy, but we'll probably take that off some at some point. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look too bad the way it is. So pretty thin bike. I mean, the gas tank doesn't stick out too far. But yeah, really good looking bike. Let's look at the ignition right there. Has these nice little metal guards that stick out from the key there. I like that a lot. Really good looking setup there, really durable. Let's look at these uh, pegs. Really nice rubber on these uh, foot pegs. Very high quality forward controls. So that's another reason that I bought this bike over the bolt. The bolt, I was gonna have to spend three to 400 bucks possibly more for forward controls. They really stopped making a lot of those parts. Uh, the aftermarket world really doesn't support the bolt that well. So this one already comes with it. So that's gonna be something you don't have to purchase. And bars. For the bolt, I was gonna have to buy, you know, mini apes. I was gonna have to buy extended brake lines, clutch cables, all of that. That was all gonna add up to, I think, around a thousand bucks extra that I was gonna have to spend. So it's another reason I went with this bike. But let's look at the 
instrument cluster. I'm gonna turn this on. So instrument cluster, very basic, very simple, standard analog speedometer there. It has all your idiot lights is what I like to call them. Um, but yeah, very simple. Doesn't have a fuel gauge, but it does have that f low fuel indicator. Let you know when you have 50 miles left in the tank. And very simple, get your check engine light there. Uh, turn signals, you know, very simple. And then for the info gauge there, tells you what gear you're in, that's what the one is. Uh, it has your RPM range, you can set your time. It has your uh, voltmeter there. It has your overall mileage. You can see we only have 112 miles on it. I think I put about uh, probably 40 or 50 miles on it this morning. Right, it has your trip, and then back to RPM. So very simple instrument cluster, but it's very, very durable housing. I mean, this is nice and metal. It's just very high quality. I mean, and then the controls. Controls, very, very nice grips here. These, it's the same kind of rubber as you get on the foot pegs. And just really nice. You got your, your ignition there, your starter, right, fuel pump. You got your horn over here, turn signals, high, low beams, and clutch, clutch lever. A very basic it engages really nicely and then very basic front brake there but that's about it your fuel tank it's a flush fitting uh fuel port there but just a really nice well thought out design bike and it's just very well refined in my opinion i mean like right here on the bolt there's a huge gap right there and it, it's not very good looking Right here, this whole frame is just nicely done. Piece of uh, rubber down there. It even says Rogue on it. Indian Scout Rogue. And you can't see it from the pictures, but just a very well-designed bike. All right, so we're going to start this thing up, listen to it. Here's the fuel pump turn on. I think it has a good exhaust though to it, just how it is. Uh, but we're going to be throwing those GP shorties on here and it's going to be extremely loud. Yeah, that's a pretty good exhaust note. Very V-twin sounding just right up here out of the factory. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing a lot more videos on this bike right here because it is that good. Uh, maybe we can do some test rides uh, comparing it to other bikes maybe in the future. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put those in the comment box below. So in my opinion, like I use this to go to and from work. That's what I've been doing the past few weeks. But that's kind of what this thing is for. It's like getting around town. Uh, going to and from work, just small commutes. Uh, that's where I see this bike fitting. All right, like and subscribe. We'll catch you in future videos.